Hi, everyone. I'm Rusty Dunn from Enterprise Communications. Pleased to be joined by Caterpillar Chief Financial Officer Andrew Bonfield. Andrew, always good to see you and looking forward to you taking us through the company's first quarter financial results and going on a little side venture beyond the numbers as well. First of all, how are you doing? Really well, thanks, Rusty, and really good to see you. And I'm very pleased to be able to talk about the first quarter results. We have made our way through the first three months of 2021. Let's go through the first quarter key financials here, uh, so perhaps some perspective, and start with those sales and revenues numbers as well. Take it away. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Rusty. Sales and revenues increased by 12%, or $1.3 billion, to $11.9 billion for the quarter. That increase was led principally in construction industries, which saw very strong underlying sales to users. Sales to users were up 17% in construction driven a lot by China, but actually strong across all of our regions across the world. We also saw flat sales to users in resource industries and a very slight decline in energy and transportation. That plus the small increase in dealer inventory, uh, about $0.7 billion in the quarter, uh, meant that we were able to deliver a very good sales performance, up, as I say, 12% for the first quarter. So a positive report, top line, how's that translate to the bottom line profit per share, Andrew? Yes, adjusted profit per share was up $1.22 or 74% to $2.87 for the quarter. Very strong performance, reflecting the very good performance as a result of the increased volume that we saw in the quarter. Also, other cost favorability, which meant that we more than offset the uh, reinstatement of uh, short-term incentive compensation. Very strong underlying performance on a profit per share basis. And maybe just to comment, Andrew, on the balance sheet in terms of cash on hand, cash deployment. Yes, uh, again, very strong balance sheet continues. Uh, $11.3 billion of cash on hand at the end of the first quarter. Very strong cash flow driven by that increased profitability. Also by favorable movements on things like working capital and also not paying out uh, incentive compensation in the current quarter. That meant we have uh, produced free cash flow of $1.7 billion for the first quarter. So a lot of positives to point to in this first uh, quarter. Key takeaways, as you see it, Andrew. Yeah, we've uh, obviously seen uh, increasing demand out there uh, from our customers uh, for our equipment. Uh, that is obviously a strong positive as we move through 2021. Uh, there are some challenges out there. We have to execute well uh, and make sure we proactively meet the challenge of meeting that end user demand. Appreciate your perspective and some color on the first three months of the year. A positive report for sure. Well, let's move beyond the numbers for a second. I know with the announcement of acquiring Weir Oil and Gas and the launch of SPM Oil and Gas earlier this year, Andrew, you had a chance to safely go to the facility in Texas, emphasis on safely, uh, take a tour and to be able to have a chat with Rod Sherman, our vice president of Caterpillar Oil and Gas and Marine. Let's check that out. I'm here today with Rod Sherman, our VP of the Oil, Gas and Marine Division. I'm at the headquarters of our new acquisition, SPM Oil and Gas. Rod, can you tell me what the purpose of the acquisition was? Yes, yeah, so for SPM, whereas we were looking through acquisitions for the oil and gas business, this acquisition really brought to us a comprehensive service network, a much broader product portfolio, and really puts us in a position today with customers that we can cover any solution a customer would need on a well site. We have a full gamut of solution offerings. We can come in and work to the customer. And it also brings us this an incredible aftermarket opportunity because we went through the acquisition. And so we think through the high amount of consumables we use in the oil field, it really puts us on site with customers to administer those and really drive more value and better service life out of those as we work on the opportunity to really grow our aftermarket business as well. The other thing that's very different about SPM is it's a direct customer business rather than a dealership model business, and we decided to maintain that way of working. Can you tell me how that is going to change or how that's going to help us get closer to the customer and actually drive services revenues as we move forward? SPM, as it's, as it's grown, right? So you know, SPM has been around for 50 years now. They've always been a direct-to-customer business. There's a tremendous synergy we get by maintaining that direct-to-customer relationship and working with the dealer in addition. So while we can really grow and capture that aftermarket of all the high consumables that we see that get consumed on a frack site or a drilling site and work with customers that grow that value prop, from a customer perspective, they bring in a piece of equipment to get serviced. If it's at our SPM Service Repair Center, 
we work directly with the dealer to come take care of any repairs and service that's needed on the CAD assets that are on that trailer. And likewise, work with the dealers. If a trailer is going into a dealer repair shop for engine or transmission repair, our service technicians work with the dealer to capture that. So it gives us much more touch direct to the customer and a much better opportunity to really capture and grow the aftermarket from an oil and gas business, from an oil field solution standpoint. This obviously now means we are now able to produce a holistic solution for our customers, which obviously will be a competitive advantage. Why do you think that will be a competitive advantage to Caterpillar as we move forward? We rely in our service contracts with customers. And so that fleet manager that's on site takes care of whatever the contractual terms are with that customer. And so we do a lot of work on a trailer on the pump and the flow iron side. So whatever's in the contract, they make sure the iron's on site. They are digital solutions that we have on the frac assets that are there. They provide on-site monitoring for those and they give proactive advice to the customer on when maintenance needs to occur, which really eliminates a significant portion of the customer's downtime. So as we monitored all the data that came in from the baseline data set, we've seen a significant amount of downtime that came through just not doing proactive maintenance. And so by doing that, we can focus on getting the customer's longer asset life, they can get the job done quicker, and at the same point in time, we get on-site, instant on-site data back to grow and improve the products, and for all the consumables that are there, we can make sure that genuine cat parts, you know, and SPM parts go into genuine cat products and SPM products at the same time. So again, it's a win-win for the customer because ultimately at the end of the day, their downtime is reduced, their productivity is improved, and at the same time, they've got a cat person there working with them on site to help them actually drive the value that they need for their business. Yeah, and so while that fleet manager is there working with the SPM assets that are on site, that fleet manager is also in direct contact with the cat dealer. So if any cat equipment on that site has trouble, the cat dealer is getting a phone call so, we, so they can immediately tear, take care of whatever the customer's needs are on the cat assets they have on site as well. When we were going around the factory, one of the things you mentioned was about ESG and customers' needs to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Obviously, that's a very uh, hot topic at the moment, and particularly as companies are thinking about carbon uh, reductions as they move forward. What are some of the things you think SBM brings to the table for us to help our customers with that goal in mind? So what we think through today when we look at environmental, social, and governance metrics that come through, most of the exploration and production companies are the EMPs, right, that work with service companies. And so we we're working with a service company on site who's contracted by an EP, EMP. Well, as those EMPs look at you know, better greenhouse gas emissions, reduced CO2 emissions. They really want to understand what the values we can provide. And so through our CAT oil and gas you know, network we have, we have relations with many times with the EMPs and those customers. But when we look through where some of the market's going, is they're looking at what they call the electrified pumping applications, where there's a genset, you know, driving through controls, that, you know, that genset's providing power to drive the motor, which is driving the pump. With this acquisition, the great thing we got is we seen electrification coming and we started working on an electrified trailer option. But with this acquisition, we got a 5,000 horsepower pump that fits perfectly in electric drive applications. Combine that with our G3520 genset that we work with LPSD and an energy storage system. We have, a, we have ways today where we can, with grid power coming into a site, we can use partial power from the grid, supplement the power on site with 100% gas gensets or be completely independent of the grid and provide 100% power through an electrified application using our own gas gensets on site as well. So it really helps customers, especially from a greenhouse gas emission standpoint, eliminate flaring, burn the gas that's on site, and a big savings in fuel cost to the, to the, to the customer at the end of the day as well. Andrew, a great visit to, to Texas. Always good to hear from you as well. We've been saying this for a year now. It'll be great to be in the same room together to do this as well. So good to see you. Great to see you too, Rusty. And thank you again for, uh, to all our employees out there for a great first quarter. Well said. To all of you, thanks for watching.